blood pressure okay a product of cardiac output and peripheral vascular resistance cardiac output a product of stroke volume and heart rate okay uh, so all the factors that are going to increase the stroke volume increase the uh, heart rate and increase the peripheral vascular resistance are going to finally increase the blood pressure blood pressure will directly go to the questions okay blood pressure changes by above or below heart level so uh, the sigma is to be kept at exactly heart level if you elevate it okay right it's just you have to remember there is no logic in that you have to just remember the value 0.77 is the value for every 1 cm i'll change in the height if it's not at the level of the heart just remember the value it's 0.77 and uh, look at the options they are so close you can't take a wild guess also if you don't remember the answer okay mean arterial pressure mean is how do we calculate mean mean is not mean is not exactly systolic plus diastolic divided by 2 it's not mean because the duration of which is more diastole or systole diastole is more duration so more weightage has to be given to diastole less weightage to systole let us see the options looking at the options which has more more weightage to diastole is given in option d 60% diastole 40% systole okay it's not arithmetic mean okay it's not logarithmic mean also true about the stroke volume is decreased by increase in heart rate determined by pre diastolic volume determined by after load is equal to cardiac output stroke volume can't be equal to cardiac output stroke volume into heart rate is cardiac output right okay stroke volume is per beat the volume uh, ejected out per beat is stroke volume the fraction of the volume that is ejected out uh, out of the uh, end diastolic volume is called as ejection fraction then stroke volume into heart rate gives us cardiac output decreased by increase in heart rate stroke volume decreased by increase in heart rate yes true about stroke volume okay determined by pre diastolic volume pre systolic or end diastolic it's not pre diastolic okay right so the confusion is clear now right okay determined by after load no stroke volume is determined by end diastolic volume that is the preload for the heart is equal to cardiac output so option here is only one that is a option a but i think uh, they have given b also they have given query b i think yeah they have given some have given b but the confusion you people are already sorted out right it has to be either called pre systolic or it has to be called end diastolic okay. decreased by okay next question cardiac output is decreased by increased heart rate decreased heart rate increased stroke volume none of the above simple question decreased heart rate during shock which organ is spared from vasoconstriction which organ is spared from vasoconstriction you just can't afford to have coronary vasoconstriction right so heart is spared baro receptor is most sensitive for systolic bp diastolic bp systolic systolic pulse bp pulse pressure that is difference between systolic and diastolic and mean baro receptor is more sensitive to mean blood pressure okay peripheral and central chemo receptors respond to both 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 respond to which one increased ph increased arterial oxygen increased arterial co2 decreased arterial co2 hypoxia has no effect on central right so Uh, second one is ruled out ph alteration occurs as a secondary effect after carbon dioxide alteration pco2 secondary effect is ph so first carbon dioxide has to change whether decrease or increase now we are left with hmm Simul we are talking about response means stimulation ha huh? ha huh? in okay i okay right so all of you are for increase what happens when carotid sinus this i have already told i have already discussed what happens when carotid sinus is pressed just recapitulate 
ब्रेडिकार्डिया एंड हाइपरटेंशन ऑप्शन हार्ट रेट डिक्रीजेस पेरिफेरल रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीजेस पेरिफेरल रेजिस्टेंस इन कॉन्ट्रेक्टिविटी एंड कॉन्ट्रेक्टिविटी इंक्रीजेस सो आंसर शुड बी बी पेरिफेरल वैस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस आल्सो डिक्रीजेस हार्ट रेट आल्सो डिक्रीजेस बट बट देयर इज नेट इफेक्ट इज हाइपरटेंशन नेट इफेक्ट इज हाइपरटेंशन नॉट बिकॉज़ ऑफ ओनली पीवीडी पर अदर देन पेरिफेरल वैस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस देयर इज आल्सो कार्डियक आउटपुट हार्ट रेट Uh, I think no, no, no. I think this is wrong. Sorry. What should be a correct answer? A. The key is wrong. A is the correct answer because peripheral resistance has to increase. That contributes to higher BP, but heart rate decreases. One is decreased, but still final effect is decrease increase in the uh, BP. Though heart rate is decreased, uh, cardiac output is decreased, peripheral vascular resistance is increased. That contributes to higher BP. Right? Mary's law states the relationship of heart rate with heart rate is related to Mary's law cardiac output stroke volume arterial blood pressure pre systolic volume Mary's law tells about relation between heart rate and bp okay it's about uh, increased bp causes lowering of heart rate that is called mary's law okay just remember the law What is Murphy's law? It's got nothing to do with physiology. Murphy's law is just a general statement which says if something can go wrong, uh, it has to go wrong. Okay, that is Murphy's law. So MCQs options can go wrong, so they generally go wrong. Okay, just remember that while attempting the MCQs. True about volume receptors is all except they are low pressure receptors. they provide afferents for thirst control they are located in the carotid sinus they mediate vasopressin release true are all except they are low pressure receptors yes they provide afferents for thirst control yes they send afferent impulses to thirst control the volume receptors they mediate vasopressin release yes they cause vasopressin release anti diuretic hormone helps in conservation of water they are where are they located then they are located in the atria they are located in the atrial wall volume receptors are located in the atria they are not located in the carotid sinus there we have the what receptors carotid sinus what we what receptors we have bero receptors right preload measures simple we have already discussed end that segment please be attentive end diastolic volume pulse pressure is affected by pulse pressure is affected by pulse what is pulse pressure systolic minus diastolic stroke volume compliance of aorta ejection fraction all compliance of aorta is going to affect the diastolic bp elasticity elastic recoil helps to maintain the diastolic bp stroke volume is going to affect the systolic blood pressure ejection fraction is going to affect the systolic blood pressure so answer should be all answer is only ejection fraction but all of us have agreed that answer should be all so we'll go with all largest storage of blood is in they contain what percentage of the 60% roughly 55 to 60% of the blood is stored in the vein Th that is why they are also called as capacitance vessels largest storage is in the vein normal pressure in the venous circulation is how much is the normal pressure in the venous circulation 25 is too high for venous circulation if within the venous circulation it's 25 it cannot enter inside the fluid cannot enter enter inside fluid has to leave at the arteriolar end and enter at the venous end right so pressure has to be very low of these options which is the lowest one go for it it's 10 so it is 10 mf h it is that low Cushing's reflex is bradycardia and huh? O R E hyper E. Okay, everybody is for E hyper. Okay, right. True about it's also called Cushing's uh, triad, which is a manifestation of Cushing's reflex. Okay, true about isotonic exercise is. 
heart rate decreases diastolic blood pressure increases stroke volume is markedly increased increased peripheral resistance isotonic exercises heart rate decreases diastolic bp increases stroke volume is markedly increased increased peripheral resistance which is true isotonic exercises the tone is fixed the exercises are of two types isometric isotonic okay so isotonic the tone is fixed and exercises are done which are the examples for isotonic gym okay bodybuilding exercises are all isotonic okay which one has what happens isotonic the stroke volume has to in, increase very much to compensate for that so answer is increased stroke volume muscles shorten against a constant load the load is fixed okay you are lifting 5 kg you are continuously lifting 5 kg only at that moment the tone is fixed okay uh, then uh, weight lifting and running is also an isotonic isometric are the tone increases the length is fixed try to push against a wall you cannot push a wall you can you actually push a wall so there is no change in the muscle fiber length but the tone is going on building up inside isometric differences are there is quick in, there is increase in both both of them they cause increase in heart rate but more increase in isotonic weight lifting heart rate increases more stroke volume is markedly increased here stroke volume doesn't change here it's only the heart rate that increases systolic bp is increased in both but diastolic is increased only with isometric exercises diastolic bp increases systolic remains unaltered so as a result mean blood pressure there is hardly any increase in the isotonic whereas isometric there is lot of increase in the mean bp just remember systolic increases diastolic increases so as a result mean also increases in isometric exercises whenever you are trying to push against a wall okay peripheral resistance increases in isometric uh, as a result the bp changes peripheral resistance decreases blood flow to the muscle is more whenever you are lifting weight the blood flow doesn't increase to the muscle whenever you are pushing against a wall cardiac work workload is less in isotonic exercises so that's why they are not called cardio these are called as cardio exercises i so uh metric exercises are cardio because cardiac workload is increased interstitial fluid pressure is how much what is the normal interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure see there are uh, two opposing forces for entry of fluid back into the veins one is uh, intravenous hydrostatic capillary uh, the hydrostatic pressure and then interstitial fluid pressure the fluid has to enter inside means interstitial pressure has to be has to be high okay and in uh, that has to be low which one has to be low the intravenous pressure okay but generally uh, if you go by the mechanics of the starling's forces interstitium hardly has any pressure inside that it is to the extent of negativity so how much should be the answer here going by the options there are two options which are negative minus 1 to minus 3 is the option here okay problem arises when they give very close uh this thing option large arteries are wind kessel effect that is elastic recoil which restores the diastolic blood pressure that's why they are also called as wind kessel vessels which are they the big the aorta and its major branch maximum resistance is found in resistance vessels so wind kessel vessels elastic recoil capacitance vessels veins containing maximum blood arterioles offering maximum resistance to the flow called resistance vessels arterioles velocity of blood flow is maximum in velocity will be maximum in the one which is widest so the widest are the arteries which are widest are aorta true about lymph flow is increased compression of the vessel increased by compression of the vessel when the vessel is compressed obviously there will be obstruction to the lymph flow lymphatic vessel obstruction decreased by uh, increased by exercise it happens through valveless vessels it's a low pressure system lymphatic system is a low pressure system if it has been pushed further if there is no valve it will come back so it has to be valved system veins and lymphatics are valved systems okay decreased by adjacent arterial pulsation arterial pulsation will in fact compress the lymphatics so that will cause obstruction only exercising which which will improve the contraction of the muscle and muscles will help to propel the lymph 
after propulsion the valves will hold back so the lymph doesn't come back okay just remember lymphatic is a low pressure system pulse pressure is defined as systolic minus diastolic direct fix method of measuring cardiac output requires estimation of there are different methods of measuring cardiac output direct is, one is called as fix method for fix method what all you need to estimate oxygen content of arterial blood oxygen content of venous blood oxygen consumption per unit time which you want to measure fix principle depends on utilization of any uh, substrate or nutrient present in the blood flow to an organ so how much comes how much goes and how much is taken away all three you require to estimate through using fix principle so you have to measure all of the above okay time taken for arterio arterial venous transit is remember the value that's all no logic how many seconds is going to take from arteries to venous so how long is the stay period within the capillary circulation not more than 1 or 2 seconds just within 1 or 2 seconds it is taken into the uh, interstitium interstitial and back to veins so the transit period is 1 to 2 seconds most permissible capillaries are seen in the organ which is highest seat of metabolism the capillaries has to be most permissible there so that the transit transit time is highest and the uh the blood stays for longer period there so that metabolism can occur metabolic changes can occur so which is the one which is metabolically most active here liver so everybody agrees so we go for liver pulmonary lymph flow rate is it is i said it is low pressure system it is a slow system it is having valves it is compressible system so the rate is slow so which you want to go for the slowest rate go for the slowest Lowest rate is 20. We will go for slowest. Okay. Of course, options might be changed next time. It might be 10, 20, 30. That time, don't go for 10. So just remember, 20 ml per hour. Okay, is the flow rate, pulmonary flow rate. Increased blood flow to lung causes no change in pulmonary vascular resistance. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance, decreased pulmonary vascular resistance. Uh, initial increase followed by decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance. initial increase followed by decrease why why should it de decrease later on it keeps on increasing pph develops pulmonary hypertension develops okay uh, so always there is increased vascular resistance by increased blood flow in direct fix method to measure cardiac output we take blood sample from okay so you have to just remember which is carrying oxygenated which is carrying deoxygenated blood then we can estimate femoral vein bronchial vein pulmonary artery pulmonary vein pulmonary vein why carrying oxygenated blood all others are okay <laughs> but it's not the lung tissue which we are going to use we are going to use the cardiac utilization in that case artery okay right so answer is pulmonary artery your logic was correct but provided we use lung tissue for estimation but generally it's not the lung that is used 